Good morning, friends, and a warm welcome as we join together here in the church or at home or wherever you are to worship God together. It's good to see everyone here this morning. Number three, Grant. Are we now? Yeah. Okay. Good morning, friends, and a warm welcome as we join together here in Kings Park Church or at home or wherever we are to worship God this morning. You may remember that as part of the Church of Scotland's National Day of Giving, we chose to support the work of the Lodging House Mission. And we've received a thank you card along with a letter from the Lodging House Mission, which I will put on the notice board in the vestibule um, so that everyone can see it. But just saying um, thank you very much for your harvest donations of dry and tinned goods and also assuring us that they will be put to good use um, throughout the winter months. During the month of October, we also raised £610 for the Lodging House Mission and this has now been forwarded to them. And a big thank you to everyone who contributed in this way. It's with sadness that I have to announce the passing of Mr Ian McPhail. Ian was the longest serving elder, and although unable to be with us in church for some time due to failing health, he always maintained a keen interest in the life of the church, and his son Graham kept him up to date with the Kirk session. And our thoughts and prayers are with Graham, Callum, and the rest of the family at this time. And finally, we welcome once again to lead us in worship this morning, the Reverend Tom Nelson. Uh, back again, Tom. We keep doing everything right, I guess. Um, but it's good to see you once again. Thank you, John, and good morning, everyone. Isn't it great to be here on a sunny day? And to be together in God's house, it's a joy indeed and uh, great to be worshipping. Trust that God will bless us uh, with his uh, love too and his kindness and his spirit as well as the beautiful sunshine. So welcome, it's good to be with you again. You just can't get rid of me at the moment, but uh, it's my joy and I hope that uh, we'll be blessed together as we share in worship. The psalmist uh, says in Psalm 47, Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. How awesome is the Lord Most High, the great King over all the earth. This being in the liturgical calendar, Christ the King Sunday, we're thinking very much of Jesus as our King of Kings. Our opening hymn, I understand, is not one you know too well. I'll not ask you to do the parts. But let's sing together if you're able to stand and join us. Make way, make way for Christ the King. Oh, 
Now, our prayers together as we gather our thoughts a little more. Let us pray. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, before whom all thrones must fall and bow in love and adoration and awe. You're the mighty God who's given to us your beloved Son to be our King, not only our Saviour, not only our Good Shepherd, but a King to rule in truth and love and majesty. Jesus, beginning and the end of all things, the Alpha, the Omega, who was and is and is to come, you are the complete awesome, full God, meeting all of our needs as your created beings. For we're mindful, Heavenly Father, that we are created to worship, created to be in fellowship with you, created to know you and to have life in all its fullness. And as we recognize the beauty of the changing seasons, we recognize your faithfulness and your power with all the changing seasons around us, that you are still faithful and true within us. So, Father, help us today uh, to set apart this time, as it were, to be a sanctuary of your grace and love and mercy, where we can leave aside all those cares and concerns of the times and marvel in your presence, to find ourselves strangely warned, perhaps, as the word is opened to us and as we share in fellowship and worship and in prayer. Lord God, speak to us, we pray. The care worn away as we are often in this world, hassled, often betrayed, sometimes be ourselves betraying others. We feel ourselves subject to so many forces beyond our power, but you have the power. You are in ultimate control. And so we bring ourselves in all of our needs to you, recognizing too that perhaps we often lose sight of your majesty and power and glory for we should crown you with many crowns for you're the lamb upon the throne lord jesus fulfilling all of our desires and needs in the cross and resurrection taking away the sins from us so father we with confidence and with humility confess that we are in need of jesus and his cross for those words spoken out of turn, those thoughts which are unworthy, those actions which we'd wish we'd never taken, the steps we'd never taken. Lord, in your mercy, renew us, forgive us, and draw us up into that place of reassurance that you will never fail us. You will never, never let us go. So, Father, help us then to listen for your voice by the power of your spirit you've given to us the discernment to hear Jesus' words and to apply them to our hearts by the power of your spirit for this great gift and privilege we have as a congregation today Lord receive our thanks and lead us then as we say together the words that Jesus taught his disciples and us to say our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the king's kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, boys and girls, good to see you again this morning. And uh, one or two wee things I want to say to you about uh, this being a very special Sunday. Now, I've got a real live one of these things here. Who would, who would wear one of these? The camera can pick this up. Who, who would wear one of these? Yep. A king, yes. Or the, or the king's wife. Or a queen. Yeah, a king or queen. Um, I was told, I don't know if I should wear it or not, but it doesn't fit me. But uh, the king, maybe you could try it on when you go to the club later, save you any, any arguments at the moment. But yeah, it's a, a, a king would wear a crown like this. And uh, a king would have a crown that would fit better than 
perhaps that one fits me. But yet, yeah, uh, this is a special day when we remember that, uh, that kings and especially Jesus, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But, uh, so you know that he wears, a, a king wears a crown. A king, of course, uh, is somebody who should look after his people. He's born to be king. It's not like a, not like a, a president or prime minister. A king is born to be king. Uh, and a king should rule with kindness and love and make everybody secure and look after people. Now, it's really quite marvelous to be a king, but it's a lot of responsibility. Now, and I was thinking, I'm coming to church this morning. What's the name of your church? What's it called? King's King's Park Church. I'm thinking, King's Park Church? How did that come about? King's Park Church, yeah? Yeah. So, and um, like Queen's Park, a queen owned that. Well, that's very good. I didn't need to do my research. It's, oh, but you're, all, you're almost right. Uh, this church was built, and the money was given by McTaggart. Is that right? When they built all this area, and uh, for those of you who know the history, correct me at the door when I go out. Okay, uh, if I'm wrong. But you're right. And uh, there was a very generous man who built lots of the houses in this area and, uh, and he gave the money to build this church too. He also owned Aikenhead House, which is now King's Park. He'd owned all this, uh, he bought all this area to build houses and he gave his money for the church. And the area, this is where I'm looking for you to reassure me, it was called King's Park because it was built during the reign of King George V, who was the king during the First World War which is very appropriate since it was Remembering Sunday last year. And I, I think it was named King's Park because it was during his reign. And the park and the house were gifted to Glasgow Corporation on the, th- the 20th anniversary of his ascension to the throne. So a wee bit of history lesson there for us. But it's wrapped up in the fact that this King's Park was named because of a really good king who helped us through the, the First World War. And it's uh, the, uh, nice to think of that association with King's Park. And uh, so if anybody knows any more than that, give me a shout afterwards, because I would really love to know. I love the history of Venus. But he was a good king. And the man who gave the money, you're right, he wasn't a king. He was a sir. He was a, uh, a lord. He was um, Sir John McTaggart, wasn't it? who gave the money for this area and built the houses and built the church. So it was very special because of the great respect for a king. But he was a good king, much appreciated, much loved and respected with George V. <clears throat> but I never was thinking, wait a minute, I think of another young prince who wanted to be king. Uh, anybody seen the Lion King? Who was this? Have we got a picture of him? Oh, yes, yeah. He's got his name. It was Simba. Now, that was, it's been around for a long time. It's a lovely thing. But Simba was a, he was the young lion. He wanted to be king. And I've got some of the words of the song here. I'll not sing it to you. You'll be thankful to know. But I just can't wait to be king, he said. I'm going to be a mighty king, so enemies beware. Like no king was before, I'm brushing up on looking down and working on my roar. So all that sounds good, doesn't it? He wants to be a good, strong king to do away with the enemies of the, the people or the, the, the jungle or Africa at that time. Anyway, cartoon, beautiful. And then he goes on, oh, I just can't wait to be king. No one's saying do this. No one's saying be there. No one's saying stop that. And no one's saying see here free to run about all day to do as I want, basically is what he's saying, to do all my way. I just can't wait to be king. See, Simba, he wanted to be king. He wanted to be able to boss everybody else around. He wanted to have nobody else telling him what to do. He thought he was, I was going to say the bee's knees, but can can you be that as a, a lion? I'm not sure. But that wasn't the kind of king. Uh, that he, he ought to be in the, the whole film's about that, isn't it? He had a poor idea of what it means to be a king, for the real role of a king is to look after the needs of the people, to protect them 
and to provide for them. A good king is more concerned about caring for his people than he is in being served. Now, there is a queen. We still have a queen today. And she's very special, wouldn't you say? She trusts in God. She seeks to do the right thing. Even though some hard times. But she, Queen Elizabeth, I think, has been a really good queen. And she's a good example. Because she trusted in Jesus. And trusts in Jesus, you should say, to be a good queen. And we know that. We can see that. Whether they are royalist or not, my friends, I hope we see the duty that she has. And the love for us and the people. Jesus then. She takes her example from Jesus and her strength. We're going to read today in church here. In the last days of Jesus, he was arrested and put in trial. And he was asked, are you a king? By Pilate, the enemy. And Jesus said, yes, well, you've, you're right to say that I am a king. In fact, for this reason, I was born. Born to be king. And for this reason, I came into the world. Yeah, Jesus was a king, but unlike Simba, Simba was only interested in, in doing his own thing, but Jesus was only interested in doing the will of his father, God himself. He was born to be king, but Jesus said his kingdom's not of this earth, it's in heaven. And he only came to earth to make way for us to live in heaven. Now, where it, someday, we, I trust, Jesus will see us there. We were remembering last week, for those who have gone on before us. But Jesus wants us to know that he can be king now. Whereabouts? Not king of the outside, but king of our hearts, king of our minds, king of our thoughts. He's the one that can rule in our lives like the Queen Elizabeth today. If we're following Jesus' example and in living as he is our king, doing what he wants then we will have a life full and enriched. Not always easy, but he will be able to lead us through thick and thin. So, my dear young friends, when we think of King's Park, I think of Jesus now. And when I think of King's Park, I think of George V and all that was the people that they sacrificed their lives here during the war. We've got a rich heritage of people who trusted in Jesus. So let's trust in Jesus ourselves uh, as we continue going on into this season. A wee prayer then before we go to our song. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus, who was your beloved Son, to be our Lord and King. Thank you. Help us today and every day to honour him, to obey him, and to follow his will for our lives. For this is your will for us. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, boys and girls, it seems that I keep changing, uh, what's the word, selecting hymns that we, we don't know. So I want to introduce this one to you. It's not as many actions as the last time, I promise you, so you can rest. If you want to sit down um, and, and listen to the tune, Jonathan, we're going to play through the tune. Jesus is the name that we honour. If we put up the first verse so we can see the words, uh, as we just listen to the tune, okay? Anyone know it? Apart from Howard. <laughs> Sandra, thank you. Good. So no pressure on you guys. You sing out loud through the mask. Um, love this. So can I ask then, just remain seated, and we'll sing it through once, and then uh, we'll stand in honour and joy and sing it. Uh, was that the whole thing through there? It was just a short thing. So then we'll stand and sing it a second time. So just remain where you are, and we'll get the words in the tune. Thank you. Nice i 
His name we worship. Jesus is the name we trust. He is the King above all other kings. Let all creation stand and sing that Jesus is our God. We will Jonathan, do you think we've got all the words, have we? That's tricky. <laughs> Jesus is the name we want. I've, I've given you the wrong number of 481. Has anyone got a hand book I can look at? Just back. I've been away a little bit on back, folks, in the camera. The chorus goes, We will glorify, we will glorify. Can you play a chorus? We will glorify, we will lift him high, we will give him honor and praise. We will glorify, we will lift Jonathan. So, I'm about, I'll take this off for a second. The first verse, Jesus is the name we honour, his name we praise, the majestic name above all names, the highest heaven and earth proclaim. So, um, then we sing, we will glorify, we will lift him high, we will give him honour and praise. And that's just repeated. We will glorify, we will lift him high, we will give him honour and praise. And then it's on to the second verse, which is Jesus is the name we worship, and in the third verse, Jesus is the Father's splendor. Okay, does that help folks in the overheads? If you're listening at home, it's 481 on the, in the hymn book. So can we stand and sing? And I'll try and belt out the chorus with you. Jesus is the name we honor. Jesus is the name we praise, majestic name above all other names, the highest heaven and earth proclaim that Jesus is our God. In the chorus, we will glorify, we will lift him high, we will give him honor. the name we worship, Jesus is the name we trust, He is the King above all other kings, let all creation stand and sing that Jesus is our God. In the chorus, He will glorify, we will lift Him high, we will give Him honour and praise. We will glorify, we will lift him high, we will give him honor and praise. Jesus is the Father's splendor, Jesus is the Father's joy, he will return to reign in majesty 
and every eye at last will see that Jesus is our God. We will glorify, we will lift him high, we will give him honor and praise. We will glorify, we will lift him high, we will give him honor and praise. Well done, thank you so much. The words of that little hymn are just fantastic. So we've got a chance to look at that. 481 in the hymn book. But youngsters, thank you. Off to Sunday school. Thank you for your help. Hear the word of God. The first reading this morning can be found in the Gospel of John at chapter 18 and reading from verses 33 to 40. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate replied? Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You said, say that I am king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth, retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at a time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, no, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. Our second reading this morning can be found in the last book of the Bible, in the book of Revelation at chapter 1 and reading verses 4 to 8. Greetings to the seven churches. From John to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace be yours from God, who is, who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits in front of his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the first to be raised from death, and who is also the ruler of the kings of the world. He loves us, and by his sacrificial death he has freed us from our sins and made us a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father. To Jesus Christ be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming on the clouds. Everyone will see him, including those who pierced him. All peoples on earth will mourn over him so shall it be. I am the first and the last, says the Lord God Almighty, who is, who was, and who is to come. Amen, and thanks be to God for these readings from his holy word, and to his name be all praise and glory. Thanks, Jonathan. Another more gentle, more modern hymn again, it's in hymn book 356, 356 in the hymn book, Meekness and Majesty, reflecting on Jesus our King.
It's interesting that the co- this is what's described in the church as the last Sunday of the year. <laughs> Not quite the last Sunday for us, is it, in, in the calendar, but liturgically, uh, with all the readings that the, the, the church has historically put into place for each season, uh, this is called Christ the King at Sunday, as you possibly will know. And it's a, a great way of just bringing our, our perspective in the whole of life and going into Christmas and all that season bringing it into the context of the reign and majesty and the power of God as he came in Jesus at that first Christmas time. It's a, a day that was dedicated to be back uh, not that long ago, actually inaugurated in 1925, I understand, by Pope Pius XI. And it was a reaction at that time against the rise in secularism throughout the world It was hoped that by establishing a feast day of such solemnity, people would understand that the church has a right to freedom at that time, yes, and that Christ must reign in our hearts and minds, our wills and our bodies. Jesus should be the Lord and King of all of our being. And there was a, a chaplain to King's College, Cambridge, called Richard Lloyd Morgan at one time. He said, we have witnessed the influence of the church being eroded over the decades and it is seen as nothing more than a quaint anachronism, as at best well-meaning and at worst meddlesome, ineffectual and at times downright dangerous. Of course, that's not the church we know and understand, is it? But it can be the church that the world sees is irrelevant. And really, it's really, I suppose, for us to say that of Jesus is the king of kings but in the world around he's not seen as any king more a swear word as something to be ridiculed as he was before Pilate I suppose and yet Pilate did have some respect for him as we know but we'll come to that later people can understand the role of a political king uh, who rules with power and authority over the state or the country But we've seen many a cruel dictator, and there's still some around today, aren't there? Self-styled kings, as it were, who have ruled with violence and fear. But a spiritual king is a concept that few can understand unless they encounter the living God for themselves. Folks, even in church, Can't we become complacent? And and I put my hand up to this as much as anybody else. 
complacent about the authority of Jesus in our lives. We know him as a good shepherd, seeking us out and carrying us on his shoulders. And how wonderful that is when you really need a saviour and a good shepherd. We can become very familiar with Jesus as a friend. Last week even we are talking, weren't we, about greater love is no man in this that lays down his life for a friend. We can become rather chummy with God. But we need a friend. He's given us his spirit as a comforter and a helper. How blessed that is in extremely difficult and harrowing times. It's powerful. It's empowering to think of Jesus in these ways. But then as a judge of the world, judge of us, well, we can be, think of ourselves to be spared. And again, surely we can become over-familiar and complacent. And so Christ the King Sunday is a good Sunday for us to get things into perspective. It serves as a good reminder that Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And all the authority in heaven and in earth is his. In Revelation 1 verse 5, he is a ruler of the kings of the world. And by that we know that if the greatest kings of the world are subservient to Jesus called to be righteous leaders, honest, truthful, compassionate and caring, then they will be good leaders. And there's will be a good kingship and one that serves its subjects. And as we mentioned with the youngsters being here, whether you're a royalist or not, I cannot but take my hat off to Queen Elizabeth II, who worships faithfully, a woman of faith who took her vows so seriously in Westminster when she ascended to the throne and she's subservient to Jesus. Uh, I, if my memory serves me right, in the General Assembly, Howard, you can nod if I got this right. When it comes to communion time, if the Queen is there, she doesn't sit in the throne, as it were.